WCNC Charlotte. This is Flashpoint, where power and politics collide and the tough questions get asked and answered. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. Well, the general election is set in North Carolina. The Senate race is going to be Democrat Sherry Beasley is going to face off against Republican Ted Budd. Budd decidedly beating Pat McCrory and Mark Walker it wasn't even close. This race is going to be one of the most watched, most expensive races come November. One of the biggest storylines from the primary, Madison Cawthorn losing his bid for re-election. The embattled congressman faced backlash from members of his own party over several controversies, including sexual assault allegations, pictures of him in lingerie, bringing guns to airports, and claiming that some GOP members invited him to sex parties. The winner of the 11th district primary, the man you see right there, Chuck Edwards, saying Cawthorn offered his support. Joining us now, Catawba College political science professor, Dr. Michael Bitzer, frequent friend of the show. Doctor, thanks for putting on, we appreciate it. My pleasure. All right, sum up this uh, past Tuesday's primary in a single headline for me. Uh, played out as expected. I think, you know, on both the Republican and Democratic side at the big level, the U.S. Senate race, it was very much the Bud Beasley matchup uh, for November that everybody expected. I think the margin between Ted Bud and Pat McCrory was a surprise. And certainly the intensity of the North Carolina 11th Congressional District with Madison Cawthorn losing his reelection bid, renomination bid. You know, that that was something that I think a lot of us were expecting, but just were not sure it would happen. Uh, let's take those one by one uh, for one, the Senate race. You had Pat McCrory, uh, probably not probably the most well-known Republican in the state of North mm -hmm. Carolina. Name recognition up at 100 um, percent. Ran two other uh, statewide races, uh, was in the lead at the beginning of this race, we should say. Um, and, and then what happened? The party has fundamentally shifted underneath McCrory's feet, I think. You know, when you look at both Ted Budd and Mark Walker combine their percentages, you're talking about two thirds of the North Carolina Republican primary electorate basically being Trumpian in terms of their support of candidates who are most closely aligned with the former president. Pat McCrory has for years emphasized that he is a Reagan Republican. He even went as far as saying, I'm an Eisenhower Republican. That is a different strain from a Trump Republican. And right now at two thirds, Trump Republicanism is the dominant feature in North Carolina Republican Party politics. The Reagan style approach is a distinct minority. Uh, and what happens to Pat McCrory from here? That's a great question. And I think, it, you know, for a lot of candidates and a lot of Republican voters that fit that mold of a Pat McCrory style kind of Republican, they, they don't feel like they're necessarily in their own home, but where else do they go? So I think partly party loyalty will continue to play a role. But the key question in my mind is how energized, how mobilized, how enthusiastic will they be come November's general election? Uh, let's go to the 11th congressional uh, race, uh, where evidently it was not enough to be Trumpian. It, it wasn't, but you have to take in the multitude of other factors that basically doomed Madison Cawthorn. And we have to note, it was a close election. The deciding factor was the fact that 42% of all the early votes came from unaffiliated voters and Chuck Edwards dominated in early voting, built his lead up to where Madison Cawthorn won on election day, but just didn't have enough to overcome that substantial uh, advantage. I think the hubris, I think the political adolescency of Madison Cawthorn really caught up to him. You know, when you decide you're going to announce, I'm gonna flip to another district, but then run back home when the map doesn't favor you, that started the downhill slide. The onslaught of negative news only compounded it, but it was a close election. We have to admit that there was enough substantial vote in that district on election day to potentially have put Madison Cawthorn ahead for renomination. You're, you're referring to the fact that as the redistricting process was working out, he switched districts. 
um, and for, for voters back home, they they want to know that you're fighting for them. And if you can so switch so quickly switch allegiance to some other geographic area because it's you know politically expedient to you, um, there, there's an authenticity factor that doesn't quite ring true there. Um, it strikes me another big winner, uh, perhaps the biggest winner um, from the race this past Tuesday, is outside money. Oh, most definitely. I think this continues the trend of nationalization of local politics, state politics. You know, the Club for Growth alone, the multi million dollars dumped on Pat McCrory certainly did not help in that contest for the former Charlotte mayor and former North Carolina governor. But this fall, that's just going to look like a drop in the bucket, I think, compared to what we will see descend on North Carolina in terms of outside money. This U.S. Senate race is an open seat that is the most competitive. We're a competitive state, but lean to the right slightly. It's going to be an advantage Republican environment to begin with. But both parties are going to see this as a valuable seat to try and either retain for the Republicans and build their majority or swipe away for the Democrats to try and hold on to some majority in the U.S. Senate. So size up this matchup, uh, Bud versus Beasley going into the, the, the next few months. Uh, who do you give the advantage to? It has to be advantage Republican at this point in time, just because of the basic midterm fundamentals. The president's party always loses seats, typically in midterm elections. Joe Biden's approval rating is low. Economic issues, particularly inflation, is at the forefront. But there are a host of other issues, abortion, January 6th committee hearings, unknowns that are going to have an impact potentially. But this year's election is a base year election. Republicans generally have higher turnout rates than Democrats. Unaffiliated, the biggest group in North Carolina registered voter pool will have the typically the lowest turnout rate. So this will be a battle for Republicans and Democrats to get their voters out to the polls come November. And, and remind us, because we talked to you about redistricting so many times, as far as the House members go, we're going to see this set of House members go in, but they're not going to be there for long. No matter who wins in November, more than likely the districts are going to change all again next year. Thanks to the Supreme Court, state Supreme Court and a court ruling, we will have a redrawing of the districts at the congressional level yet again next year. The battle for the state Supreme Court will be at the top of the ballot for Republicans to control. This all will, will play out for a year and then we may have a whole new set of dynamics come for 2023 and 2024. Wow. It's, uh, it's almost head spinning uh, for, for folks like you who study this uh, on a daily and a yearly basis. Um, all right. Uh, Professor of Politics, Michael Bitzer from Catawba College. Professor, thanks as always. We appreciate it. My pleasure. By the way, before November's general election, people here in Charlotte will head back to the polls to vote in the mayoral and city council race. That's going to be July 26th. So we've got the city elections to July 26th and then the federal state races come November. It's a bit confusing. More Flashpoint after this.